Greetings, everyone. Joseph James here with another newsletter brought to you by the School of Trade.com. Today was August 18th, 2009. Before we talk about another sleepy summer day here, the month of August, we're moving our way through the month of August here. We took one trade today. Uh, very busy day, as you guys can imagine. Trying to wait patiently here for September to come. And of course, I want to remind you guys we have a free resource online. Go to our YouTube page. That's forward slash School of Trade. And please, guys, when you're there, please rate and comment on those videos. Now, we're keeping you guys posted here. We took one trade today. Uh, one trade, 60 bucks, brings our weekly total to 60 because we had no trades yesterday. And it brings our monthly total here just above now, 1600 bucks here for contracts. This, of course, is USD. Let's take a look at our term of the day. Wacky Wednesday. Now, as you guys know, tomorrow's Wednesday. And tomorrow is the Wednesday prior to the third Friday of the month. That is Options Expiration Friday. What is Wacky Wednesday? Well, Wacky Wednesday is the Wednesday prior to Options Expiration Friday. Now, of course, if you're unfamiliar, options expiration, or we call OPEX, is the third Friday of the month, unless, of course, the first day of the month is a Friday, then it's the fourth Friday. The third Friday of the month, unless the first day of the month is a Friday, then, of course, it skips the third Friday, and it's the fourth Friday. What is Wacky Wednesday exactly? Well, it's when the options traders are going to begin the process of shuffling their portfolio to prep for Friday. Now, options expire at the end of the day on Friday. So if you're an options trader or you're a major money manager, you're not going to show up on Friday morning and then begin to do your work. You're going to start it on Wednesday, right? a couple days in advance to make sure that you're not procrastinating to the last minute. So of course, on Wacky Wednesday, these traders begin the process of uh, preparing for this. right? They prepare for Friday. They're starting to shuffle around their portfolio in preparation of these options expiring on Friday. Now, real quick, I want to remind you guys that this only affects the E-minis. This is not going to affect your currencies or your commodities. Okay, it only affects your E-minis. Okay, and it also only affects the market's open outcry hours. Okay, so the actual hours of the pit. So the U.S. session from 9.30 to 4 o'clock, that's also the only time it affects the market. And it's characterized by seeing lots of volume, right? Lots of volume. But the problem is, is that volume comes in these unpredictable large chunks, on the time and sales window or on the tape. So we see a lot of volume in the market, but we'll see these huge, massive orders come across, which basically is having no rhyme or reason. There's no pattern behind it. It's just simply these institutional sized traders that are shuffling around their positions, whether it be uh, buying or selling futures contracts on these stock indexes. So lots of volume in large chunks. Now, it becomes difficult for us as traders because obviously lots of volume sounds great. But when it comes in large chunks, and these large chunks are unpredictable, it becomes difficult for us to filter out the OPEX volume from the supply and demand volume. right? When, As you guys know, we use volume throughout the day in our trading, and we use volume, example, around uh, support and resistance. So by reading the volume as price approaches overhead resistance, we can look to identify market sentiment and look to take trades because of that. If we're unsure as far as whether or not the volume being demonstrated at this level of resistance is because of OPEX or it's because of just the simple supply and demand of the market. Well, it becomes difficult for us now to determine what the actual sentiment of the market is. In fact, rookies, guys, want to be very careful tomorrow. Okay, so rookies out there, beware. In fact, you may want to avoid trading the E-minis altogether tomorrow. Uh, for all those veteran traders, guys, if you've seen a couple of these days come and go, you know that this can be a very frustrating day to trade. Wacky Wednesday can be very frustrating if you're not prepared for it. So just be prepared, use caution, and potentially avoid the market as well. You know, there's a lot of professional traders out there that simply don't trade Wacky Wednesday because it's very difficult, like I said, to pick up on which volume is based upon OPEX or what volume, of course. In other words, why are the buyers hitting the tape? Are they hitting it because OPEX or because they actually want to buy this area? Okay, so that's why it becomes a little bit difficult for us as traders because we have a tough time uh, siphoning out between the difference of the OPEX volume and the just regular traders, the speculators, the institutional traders that are trading because of supply and demand. So that's Wacky Wednesday, and that is tomorrow. And beware, we've got uh, OPEX Friday coming up, and then we've got, of course, Manic Monday next Monday. We'll talk more about that here later on this week, so keep keep watching these nightly videos. Now, we'll talk more about Wacky Wednesday, and we'll show you guys how we trade Wacky Wednesday tomorrow morning in the room. I want to remind you guys, the beginner's course is highly recommended for all free trial members. Our room opens up at 2.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's available for lifetime members and trial members. Come out and join us. We have three simple jobs. That is to identify, adjust, and execute. And tomorrow morning when you guys join us at uh, whether it be 2.45 or at 8 a.m., right, the European session or the U.S. session, we're going to talk about how we're going to develop 
the mentality of a trader, how we're going to prepare for the day ahead, both mentally and technically. And of course, these three jobs, identify, adjust, and execute, they're going to give us the tools that we need to do that job. All right, so of course, let's take a look at one of the trades we took today. Now, we actually called two trades today. The first trade at 1022 here. This is, of course, on the crude. Now, I want to remind you guys, this is the crude 909 contract. We're going to be rolling over to the 1009 contract tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, we will not be trading the 909. We'll be trading the 1009 on the crude, symbol CL. More information on the crude market can be found going to its exchange website, which is NYMEX, N-Y-M-E-X, NYMEX.com. Give you more information about the different contract months and what rollover is. Now, our first trade here, 22 minutes past the hour. This was a two-step short here at 49. Now, I didn't take this. It was a little bit too high a risk for our liking. Uh, but, of course, the members that did take it, I didn't take it, of course, live in the room, but in helping our members, of course, manage this position. In at 49, you would have taken your profit at 3, at 6, and then at 2, totaling 14 ticks there because you take two targets off, two profit, uh, two contracts off at the 3. So six, so 6 ticks on the first target, 6 ticks in the second one, 2 ticks in the final target for our trailer, and that's 14 ticks there. So that obviously got our day off to a pretty good start for all of our members. Majority of our members took that trade and they made some pretty good money today. In fact, a lot of our members uh, that traded a little more aggressively today, uh, they made their daily goals today. So a lot of our members did very well today. First trade, high risk, as you guys know in the room. Everyone knew exactly where the entry was. It was called high risk because of our red pot bars. Moving forward here, just about 11 o'clock, we watched as price broke below the 67.30 level. We looked for a wave short here as price began to broke down. Uh, we saw a couple things. First of all, we saw that stutter step pattern. That stutter step pattern right there to the right of this, uh, of this price action here. You can see very clear that stutter step pattern is an indecision pattern that we use to avoid this wave short. We also saw red pot bars. So, of course, a stutter step pattern tells us to be very careful about this trade. And red pot bars tells us that we have slow price action, right? Pace of the tape. That's what pot stands for, pace of the tape. So when we see red pace of the tape bars, we know that price action is very slow. We know the stutter step pattern tells us that indecision is right there. So we, of course, disqualified that wave short. And as always, our rules save us money. So our rules kept us out of that dangerous trade, looking then for a two-step long. Remember, once we see a wave short fail, we're then looking for a two-step long. So I immediately then marked my swing highs. And this example here was a great example because we had two, right, you see these blue lines here, we had two swing highs. I used the more conservative entry, which was at 35, rather than 33. As you can see there, there were two swing highs. Now remember guys, we have an automated indicator, right, that does all this for us. The indicator actually defines all of these swing highs for us. So we don't need to worry about marking those things in our charts. These are two blue lines that I drew in here just for illustration purposes after the fact. But these, of course, these, sw these two swing highs were identified by this indicator for us. So we didn't even have to think. I looked at it, said I want to take the more conservative of the two, which is at 67.35, right, the higher of the two bars. And then, of course, at 11.05, we took a two-step long here at 38. As you guys know, 35, we look for some follow-through, so 36, 37, 38, got long on 38, took profit at our first target of three ticks, and, of course, that brings in uh, six ticks total there uh, on that winner. Okay, so that's actually incorrect. It should be six ticks. Two contracts taken off at three ticks, total six ticks. Then, of course, as you can see, it bounced right back against us, stopped me out at my point of entry for a final of a total of six ticks there on that winner. So high risk trade number one, didn't take that, made some pretty good money on that for our members. I took the second trade, a moderate risk there, obviously, 11.05, two step at 38 for another six ticks. So another consistently winning, profitable day here in the room. Didn't see as many opportunities as we would like to see, but you know what? Those are the breaks sometimes, right, guys? Recap, live trade room opens up at 2.45 a.m. Eastern Time. Make sure to come out and join us, guys. We do free webinars on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 11.30 Eastern Time. We'll trade any market you want, live calls, plenty of opportunities to ask questions, guys. And we're going to give you three weeks as part of our free trial. Come join us. Come see the market in a completely different way. Make sure you pick up a copy of the beginner's course on your way to the free trial. And always, guys, remember that YouTube page. Rate and comment on those videos. Drop us an email, sales at schooloftrade.com. My name is Joseph James. I want to thank you guys for your time today. Hope the video helps. We'll see you back in the room for Wacky Wednesday tomorrow, 2.45 a.m. We open it up. We'll see you then.